All right, hello, greetings. This is the uh, first video on my channel here, so I'm trying out this uh, channel thing. So uh, eh, I don't know, who cares? Um, so I'm gonna, obviously today I'm going to talk about the Great Pyramid and the Ark of the Covenant and some theories that I have behind it, some of which are very out there and some of which I, I don't really believe. Um, Nonetheless, some of these are very, it's very interesting to think about. That's the main purpose of this video is to just kind of get you thinking. There's no, there's, it's not, it's, a, you know, obviously this is all open for debate and this is not very much something you should take an extreme amount of pride in. Um, anyway, though, just keep that in mind and all my sources for this video are going to be linked in the description. So. The Ark of the Covenant, let's start out with talking about the Ark of the Covenant. This is a real weird, real weird uh, box here. So it's known, obviously known to kill those who would touch it without authority from God. And it seems like they're electrically shocked. Seems like it, I don't know. You know, obviously just because something seems like it does not mean that is the case. But we will investigate at least a little bit further. And we will find that the Ark of the Covenant crosses over with electricity a pretty good amount actually so uh, but like this right here Azza was instantly stricken down by God through the ark so maybe it was a source of energy I don't know and mind you a lot of there's a lot of theories out there that are like oh the ark of the covenant you know that thing right there yeah that, 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 that uh, silly ark thing they just accidentally made a capacitor and uh yeah and it, which I do believe it was a capacitor we will get to that later um if you know what a capacitor is, and you know what the Ark of the Covenant, how it was built, if you're familiar with it, then there's probably nothing, there's no new information in that area of the video. But if you don't know what a capacitor is, I will let you, uh, I'll tell you, you'll you figure it out. Keep watching. Who cares? Shut up. You're, hey. Did, now, I don't interrupt you, so you don't interrupt me again, okay? Yeah, I'm talking to, I'm talking to you, listening right now. Don't interrupt me, okay? Anyway, though. But this crosses over with electricity a lot, so and it's very interesting. And the point of and my point of this is just pointing it out. And so people think that oh, the Ark of the Covenant was uh, they just accidentally made a big battery, and they were stupid. They were not stupid. Okay, they knew what they were doing. God knew what He was doing, and I think that it being electrical just further proves how valid the Bible is. But. Ooh. That was weird. Okay, here we go. Great Pyramid. This is very interesting. So, possible form of ancient power is the Great Pyramid of Giza. So, there's a lot of evidence pointing towards there being um, that the pyramid pyramids actually found all over the world um, are power plants. They're a way to provide power for ancient people. Maybe because the uh, king's chamber in the in the Great Pyramid has piezoelectric crystals. Piezian in Greek means to press. So how it works, it's this plate that, uh, let me get out a uh, pen here. So it's this plate, uh, now, nowadays it's a plate that are used in these things like diffusers, uh, alarm clocks, that's the sound chip. Um, and what it does is it's got, okay, it doesn't want to draw, there we go. It's got these two metal layers right here. And then in the middle here, these are where all the piezoelectric rocks are. So it's a crystal, and when you mechanically hit it, then it produces electricity. So here's two wires, positive and negative. So you can push down on it this way, and then or this way, whichever, and it'll create voltage over here. So there's rocks. The rocks that do that are shaped in a hexagon that's <laughs> that's not a hexagon <laughs> okay but uh so this is how it's shaped right here this is awful <laughs> okay this is these three are positive and the other three are negative <laughs> sorry and uh so when this gets pushed down on the positive forces get closer together and so in the uh so there are these, this is two are negative, these two are positive, and they get uh, closer together. These ones get closer together. 
and so that produces voltage and then they can get squished in this way and then there's a whole science behind it i'm not going to get into it right now i'm probably messing something up if anybody knows let me know in the comments yell at me all you want <laughs> so but the king's chamber is full of these piezoelectric crystals um and you know what yeah okay so the king's chamber is full of these piezoelectric crystals and this is the uh grand gallery and these things the cool thing about this is it converts mechanical energy into electrical energy but it also counts sound waves as mechanical energy if they're loud enough um so this interestingly enough is a very acoustically uh finely tuned room uh, that's the grand gallery leads directly to the king's chamber. So you got acoustics going to piezoelectric crystals. So it definitely looks like there's some electricity being created. And interestingly enough, these are the piezoelectric crystals that make up the king's chamber right here. There's a coffer at the bottom of it. Well, coffer in quotes. But this coffer has the exact dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant. So there's our electrical crossover number one. There's, yeah, there's, there we got electrical, and then we got the Ark of the Covenant, A-O-C. Who cares? Um, but yeah, so then there's how it build it, and two cubits, and how they measure, this is a cubit right here, if you don't know, which is just an arm length, so everyone has one cubit. Um, however, they did, which that does vary from person to person, but back in Egypt, they had a royal, royal cubit, which was about, I believe it's 17.2 inches long. Um, and that's, that's their royal cubit that they used. And that's what Moses used as well. So Moses actually translated Genesis, um, or edited Genesis, um, which, so that the Ark of Noah, that was also the Egyptian cubit because Moses, uh, translated it essentially. So the Great Pyramid, it's this really weird power plant, this wireless power plant, it looks like. So I don't know, maybe maybe this thing is, maybe these are charging the Ark of the Covenant. I don't know, like how you got your phone on a charging, wireless charging pad sometimes. Same idea, I, I don't know. But there's theories that the Great Pyramid was emitting electromagnetic energy outward, just like Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower. So this thing would emit everything outward like this, it would emit electromagnetic energy, so... This is not radio, okay? Radio is vegan. This is cannibalistic. This is this is a gas-powered car. Radio is an electrical-powered car, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Essentially, it's, it's a light version and then a heavy version. This is heavy. This is transmitting power. Radio is transmitting uh, information. So it's like vegan and uh, not vegan. Uh. So that's the theory. And then this right here. This is it channeling it down from the ionosphere. That is a theory I have heard out there on the internet. And then they say, oh, the pyramid did the same exact thing. Channeled it down from the ionosphere. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. And they both have uh, water or um, what do you call aquifers. Both have underground aquifers underneath. Both tuned to the resonant frequency of the earth, allegedly. The uh, king's chamber that I just showed you is tuned to, I believe, an F sharp interestingly enough so like they have tuning forks and somehow they figured it out i'll uh i'll link it in the sources below i'll put it f sharp yeah and make a note of that okay anyway so this sounds pretty out there I've, tesla never got the funding to do this as well as far as we're aware but um that's that's something else tesla never got the funding to do this but maybe these guys figured it out somehow I don't know. But mind you, the word pyramid means fire within. So just something to consider. Pyro's fire, mid, within, like middle and stuff. And, and who cares? You, you get the idea. Um, the tabernacle. So if it's channeling it down from the ionosphere, maybe the, in the Ark of the Covenant is in the Great Pyramid. Ark of the Covenant was here too. Also had... Um, a big whirlwind of fire and a big cloud coming down from it as seen in these verses here um these chapters really 
but I don't. In the way that the tabernacle is set up, looks very specific. Uh, maybe it's some kind of electrical circuit. I I doubt that, but it, maybe it, again, the idea of this is just it's it's interesting to think about. In no way am I saying that this is fact. If you find anything that proves it is not fact, by all means, let me know. Put it in the comments. I'd love to see that. But it's interesting to think about, and plus. The ionosphere, although the ionosphere is up there, mind you, this is where planes are, right here. This is a plane, this is the ionosphere. So, like, oh boy, like, it, that's out way here, like, radius-wise, I mean, you know, that's it's pretty out there. I don't know, but this is where the northern lights occur. And so, that's caused by the magnetic field funneling back down into the Earth, and so it excites the noble gases up there and that makes them produce light. And I believe the light, what color light it produces varies on the atmosphere of which it's in. I don't know what color it would be if it was in the troposphere. I don't know if it would even be a color. I'm sure I have some big misunderstanding of this, but maybe it could be orange and that could be the fire they see. I don't know. I don't really think so. Um... But maybe, and then also you got, if this is channeling down stuff, if this is channeling down ions, this is going to be emitting a lot of ionic wind outward. And mind you, this veil is like very, very thick, like three inches thick, so that's why these candles aren't going out right here. Maybe, right? And so if it is an electrical circuit, I don't know if the input is going here and the output is the whirlwind of fire or that or the whirlwind of fire is the input of ions, and then I don't know what the output would be if that's the case. And then I don't know what the input would be if this is the case, right? So it's interesting to think about, like, everything. And I'm not trying to replace the scripture with science, right? I'm trying to replace science back into scripture. Science and religion are one and the same thing, okay? Science without religion is meaningless, and religion without science. Science, in this case, meaning knowledge by observation and studying is blind so that's all i'm trying to do i notice in both religious and scientific communities uh nowadays there's a lot of separation and there's that's probably the stupidest thing i've ever seen anyway all this is interesting to think about so maybe they're all possibly channeling it down channeling electricity down from the ionosphere maybe Interesting to think about. So, here's our second crossover of the Ark of the Covenant in electricity. So, this is a capacitor. This is how it works. It has two conductive plates, right, metal, and then one insulative plate in between both. So, you could literally make one in your kitchen right now. Go get some wax paper and then aluminum foil and just make a sandwich out of it and roll it up. But there you go. You've got a capacitor. So, it stores positive charges on this end, negative charges on this end. That was the wrong way, who cares? Um, and then you get wires here. This is how it's used today, right? And then you can charge this up, essentially. And it stores charges temporarily. So it's a very cheap way to make a battery. It, it's a temporary battery. So, Ark of the Covenant. How does this cross over? I think the Ark of the Covenant was a capacitor. This, I'm, this I believe, okay? But if you don't, that's cool. That's fine. Because right here, Exodus 25, 10 through 11, they shall make an Ark of shittim wood or acacia wood, uh, and thou shalt overlay it with pure gold within and without. So here's the wood, gold inside and outside. Very interesting to think about, so... The inside would be the anode, and this side would be the... Which is just positive and negative. Same thing. Um, so, it could store electrical charges. Maybe. Now, where would that energy be coming from? How would it be charged? I have no idea. That's where the divine energy comes in. That's why I still believe it was God. I cover that in a minute. Hold on. Um, but, here's our third crossover. The holy priest would go in. They're, they would take their shoes off because they're standing on holy ground. Electricity always wants to flow to ground because the ground is negatively charged, allegedly. So that's how electric fences work. You can stand on a plastic milk crate and touch an electric fence and you'll be fine because the, the you're not touching the ground. According to the electricity, 
you are not touching the ground directly, right? If you were standing on something metal barefoot, yeah, that would hurt because metal is conductive. Electricity flows through that. Electricity does not flow through milk crates. So, that's pretty interesting. So you can look, I mean, any electrical hazard safety video. I mean, <laughs> if you've taken hours of OSHA like I've been forced to do, this is something they just drill into your mind. So when I looked at the Ark of the Covenant, when I read those previous verses on the instructions how to build it, I was like, yo, that sounds like a capacitor. And then I remembered this. I'm like, oh, yeah. So very interesting. And that's what the uh, electrical outlet is for, right? The ground. This third one right here, that's the ground. So you could actually, meh, you probably shouldn't do this, but you could, if there's any prong that you should stick something metal into that in touching it, it should be the ground right here. Obviously, you shouldn't do that because <laughs> it's not a good idea to do There's no convenient... Why would you do that? You're stupid. But if there's anyone who touches this one because it flows directly to ground. So this is the positive and negative or negative. It's AC, so who cares? It's same thing. This is where the electricity flows out of these two. It comes out of one and goes back through the other. Uh, and it switches between those 60 times a second on average. Um... But, so, basically, these run to the appliance or something. Say so you're vacuuming. Uh, there's a vacuum. <laughs> there's a vacuum. Uh, and, uh, say so you're vacuuming, right? There's a vacuum. And something goes wrong with the motor inside. Well, instead of, if you're standing here, being stupid, and you're standing on ground right here, you're, you're missing a head there. I gave you a head. Congratulations. Uh, you're vacuuming, and then something goes wrong in the appliance. If this ground is not also there, that's going to directly flow through you to the ground. And that's going to hurt, but thankfully we have the ground that's wired in. So instead of flowing through you, it's going to flow this way and into the ground, right? Down here, wherever the ground, le the gr the ground leads to the ground. Anyway, though, so that's, that's our third crossover. Nikola Tesla has a theory on how the Ark was charged. He, he believes that it was electrical capacitor, as I do. But he says, Moses was a practical and skillful electrician far advanced, far in advance of his time. The Bible describes precisely the arrangements of a machine with electricity da, 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 generated by friction of air against silk curtains and stored in a box constructed like a condenser. Very plausible to assume that the sons of Aaron were killed by a high tension discharge. So, very interesting to think about. I do not agree with this. It never says Moses. It, Moses didn't even build the ark. Uh, Bezalel, I believe that's how you say it, was the guy that built the ark. So, if anybody knew how it worked, it was this guy. So, shout out Bezalel, earliest known electrical engineer. Shout him out. And so, as far as I'm aware, I mean, it's a cool idea of Moses being an electrician. I don't think so. Maybe, though. I don't know. I wasn't there. Uh, but maybe you were. I don't know. Also, it, and it, I do not believe it was charged by static electricity. And here's why. He says silk curtains. Not sure where the silk came from. Every time it mentions a curtain that's near the Ark of the Covenant in the Bible at all, or just cloth, it's always linen, woven linen the veil was made of. And they covered it with the veil of the covering when they were carrying it around. That was linen. And linen is very resistant to electricity. 10% of linen in your fabric is enough to sure, ensure you'll never feel static shock. So the Ark is also... And there's also another theory that says um, that the Ark was carried right by these priests and their clothes would rub against it and that would charge it with static electricity. Yeah, right. I had to, Again... These, there was carried by Levite priests, like it says in these verses here. And the Levite priests wore linen. It gives instructions how the Levite priests are to dress. Exodus 28, and it says, wear linen. Like, there's no silk in there at all. So, and also they say it was charged in a hot desert climate helped. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Probably. Um, I, that, seems, that seems like it is possible. Maybe not, though. But... I don't even think Egypt was a desert. Now, I'm, I know they went 
far beyond Egypt, but I think with the time, you know, obviously the Great Pyramids are in Egypt, and I think definitely at one point the Ark of the Covenant was in the Great Pyramids, so I do not think Egypt was a desert, so I don't think it made much difference. In fact, I know Egypt was not a desert, so the Sphinx has a lot of water erosion around it, like a lot, so, and it's just a desert, right? And there's a lot of cities we find underground in Egypt. They're still finding some today. I think there was one found earlier this year, maybe. Um, cities. How, how do you live in the desert like that back then? You can't. It has to be. It has to be well watered everywhere. Like it says, Genesis 13 literally says, Lot lifted up. This is when Abraham, or when Lot's choosing his land, uh, that Abraham's, there's like, okay. Lot, you, lot, which lot do you want? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, and he lifted up his eyes and beheld the plain of Jordan. It was well watered everywhere. Like, yeah, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. My brother showed me this verse, and I, there was already a lot of evidence. Uh, I believe I watched a video by Bright Insight. I'll link that in the description as well. Um. That's that's a very good video. It, I watched that video before I even knew about this verse. And I was like, oh, shoot, I didn't even know there was a verse about that. So that was really, really cool. All right. Sorry, I wrote that down. Okay. But the, where was, so then, what was the Ark's real power source? Well, let's think for a sec. The Ark of the Covenant is God's presence with the Israelites. God is supplying the power to the Ark because God is power. If the Ark was charged by static electricity... That's power from man, not from God. That's heretical. So, Nikola Tesla, again, he said this, he believed this. I love Nikola Tesla, but he's wrong there. Nobody's right on everything, right? Except for me. Uh, but anyway, the fact that the Ark was electrical, I think, proves that God was with the Israelites. Clearly, there's some divine power going on. Whether it's electrical or not, they couldn't explain it back then. We still can't explain it today. They, we pretend we can if you do some research on this online, there's a lot of people pretending they know exactly what they're talking about. They have no idea. <laughs> okay, so it is, it is definitely a divine energy source. But let's talk about the Great Pyramid for a second. I don't know. If you can think of a better title for like this part here, let me know. But it's either a monument. It's really bizarre. Maybe it's a monument to the human experience. So there's stuff that's memorialized i suppose or referenced like light time atmosphere and space latitude at the center of the grand gallery 29.9792458 speed of light same exact thing so that's very interesting the length of the base of the pyramid is the exact days and time of one post flood year the king's chamber is always 68 degrees somehow which is like Apparently, that's the ideal temperature for man to live in. That would be the atmosphere part, right? And then the measurements of the queen's chamber. You can do some calculations. Again, this will be linked in the description. That can calculate to 11.2 kilometers, which is the escape velocity for Earth. Very interesting. And then there's also, if you do another calculation, you can get the escape velocity for Earth to put something into orbit which is very interesting. So maybe it's a monument to the human experience. I think it's a monument to God, though. It has a wide passageway that leads down to the pit, and a narrow way leads up to the king's chamber, which holds an empty tomb or coffer. Although I don't ever believe it was a tomb, I think it held the Ark of the Covenant. Either way, that's, it still leads to God's promise. Uh, the king's chamber starts on 50th row of stones. God's presence, sorry. Uh, which is the year of Jubilee, or, or prom, okay, oh, okay, uh, originally the pyramid was covered with 144,000 casing stones, I, I forget how they know this, uh, description, description, uh, the casing stones are fitly joined together, right, like it says, Ephesians 14, 6, but then this, same number of tribes in Israel, look up Revelation 7, 4, uh, the Great Pyramid has no cornerstone, which is the top stone symbolic of Jesus' return. So a pyramid, like it says, these guys said it real good from BibleBelievers.org. The capstone of a pyramid has five sides, five corners, the chief of which always points heavenward. So that's referring to Jesus, I think, because Jesus is 
the chief cornerstone in all of these verses. He is the chief cornerstone or the cornerstone. So it's very interesting. And then Isaiah 19.19, 19, In that day there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof. The name Giza literally means border, so that's pretty interesting. Pillar usually refers to a stack of stones as well. So, and, and Giza means border because it's right by the Nile River. However, this is also referring to two things. So, I don't know. I mean, there's three pyramids, so who cares? Anyway, that's debatable, but it's very interesting. I think the Egyptians were very, very advanced society, advanced civilization. And they once had a great empire, a great city with pyramids and all that good stuff. New Jerusalem. This seems unrelated, but hold up. And the city lieth four square. It's my favorite game. I like to play that. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, because nobody else thought of that. Right? And the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs. That's 660 feet is one furlong. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. So it's saying it's this squared thing. So in the height, breadth, length are equal. So people think New Jerusalem is going to be a cube. <laughs> this. Can you imagine this descending down from the sky? I would laugh. <laughs> that, that looks stupid. But if you see a pyramid ascending down from the sky, that's a little more intimidating. Can you imagine that? Yeah. I think New Jerusalem is going to be a pyramid. The dimension, it can be four at square on the bottom. And the height can be equal to that. And a cube has four cornerstones. A pyramid has one on top, the chief cornerstone, right, pointing heavenward. That was supposed to be an arrow. This would add to this biblical symbolism. And mind you, if Jesus is the chief cornerstone right here, Jesus is light, right? I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Jesus is light. Light at the chief cornerstone of a pyramid. Which trans the light would be transluted. This is the closest picture I could find. It would be transluted. This is Jesus here, emitting light downward. It's going to translute the entire inside of this pyramid evenly with the city right, being down here. Then it's going to hit the bottom and be reflected back off of this. And it's going to emit rainbows in all directions. Right? The Bible even talks about this way before it was discovered. By what way is the light parted? Even says way. Did you know light is in a way? Light is a wave. Light is not like some solid thing. It's moving. It's in a way. Very interesting. But this thing is going to... This light is all going to reflect down, bounce out and emit rainbows everywhere. And as we know, rainbows are God's covenant, bringing this thing full circle. Also, Jesus is rainbows in Revelation, right? So, remember my covenant. No more shall a flood destroy all flesh. And that's going to be constantly reminded outside of the, emitting out of the New Jerusalem, literally, is God's covenant. So, I think that's very, very cool. And that's really about it for this video. So, I don't know. Again, it's just some interesting stuff to think about. It's uh, a lot of the... I think the New Jerusalem stuff probably is... That seems pretty solid. Um, so, And I think that the Ark of the Covenant had some electricity in it. For sure. I think it's very unlikely it didn't. But overall, it, it's some pretty out there stuff course and obviously I, I I doubt all of it actually happened the ionosphere stuff is pretty out there so I don't really think that stuff but it again it's interesting to think about it's some it's like pork you, you take big bites and it tastes real good but you got to chew on it and digest it for a while so anyway though that's my whole presentation my whole TED talk so thank you for coming to my TED Talk, and have a good day. Goodbye.